Well, hi there. Uh, today, what I want to do on this show is take a look at the syphilis situation in Japan. And this is a situation that has dramatically gotten worse uh, since the beginning of this decade. And we're going to look at some of these numbers and some of the possible reasons why it's gotten so bad. But this is a report that I did on OutbreakNewsToday.com back on November 25th. And at that time, there was 5,700 cases so far in Japan. And in addition, it was reported that there was about 18 uh, congenital syphilis cases, which if you went back just maybe five years, they were seeing from zero to three congenital syphilis cases per year in Japan. So I'm gonna take a look at some of the numbers, possibly some of the reasons, and maybe a little bit of history on syphilis in Japan. Um, let me go ahead and start out with what really triggered me to talk about this is the latest numbers. And this is the provisional cases uh, from the National Infectious Disease Institute in Tokyo. And as of December 4th, and if we go, if we scroll across to syphilis, there we go, there's syphilis. It topped 6,000 cases in 2019 with about a month ago. So, so 6,079 cases. And if we scroll down, we can see that over 1,500 of the cases are from Tokyo. And the other hot spot for syphilis in Japan is Osaka Prefecture, which has nearly 1,000 cases. So those are the two um, prefectures and cities that have the biggest problem with syphilis in the country. Okay, let's go back to these slides and something that was reported last year. Syphilis cases surged past 6,000 for the first time in 48 years. So for the first time since 1970, 2018 saw more than 6,000, nearly 7,000 syphilis cases. Um, a dramatic, dramatic increase. Let's see what the Manichi uh, report has to say from uh, January of this year. Nearly 7,000 cases of syphilis were reported in Japan for 2018, exceeding 6,000 cases for the first time in almost a half a century, and more than 1,100 cases from 2017, according to the National Institute of Infectious Diseases. Uh, the spread of the serious sexually transmitted disease is triggered by the growing use of dating apps on smartphones, according to experts. Syphilis was rampant in Japan until shortly after the end of World War II, but the total reported cases declined to several hundred annually until 2011 when the rebound began. It says syphilis infections are particularly surging among women in their 20s, increasing tenfolds in three years. And then among men, those from their 20s to their 40s were very, are very susceptible to the infection. A main infection route is between employers, um, excuse me, employees and users of the sex industry, according to this report. A survey of outpatients at medical facilities in Tokyo's Shinjuku Ward by the local public health center indicated that half the people that had heterosexual syphilis were infected either through the use of sexual services in the past six months or work in the industry. So, yeah, syphilis has been growing a lot and we're going to talk about how strongly it's been growing over the past recent years. Okay, so why are the numbers increasing? Well, the exact causes are unknown according to this report from the Japan Times. Uh, the exact causes are unknown and are being studied by doctors and researchers. Uh, Kitamura, he's a physician in, in Tokyo, says, doctors have recently become more aware of the illness thanks to a recent government campaign, which we're gonna talk about uh, momentarily, and greater media coverage which has led to more tests and more reports of infections. Kitamura noted that unlike other developed countries where men who have men have sex with men have been associated with the rise, the increase in Japan has been attributed more to heterosexual encounters. 
women who have one-off sexual encounters with men they become acquainted with through social media are also at high risk. And then it asks, is there any truth to comments attributing the rise in syphilis cases to tourists from overseas? And apparently there was a assembly member in uh, one of Tokyo's wards who caused an uproar by tweeting that the recent upsurge in syphilis is due to tourists from abroad, particularly from China. And uh, according to health officials, they say that the infection routes are impossible to nail down and that such arguments are based on the mere fact that the timing of the increase in syphilis cases coincides with a surge in tourist numbers. I won't even take such claims seriously, according to the public health official. But it's important to understand, he added, that for anyone who uses the nation's heterosexual sex industry, the risk of syphilis is there. This is unlike the United States, for example, where the risk of infection through using heterosexual sex services is relatively low. All right, so let's go on and continue with this. And um, so health officials in Japan have... This is back in, I think it was 2016, uh, started taking some unusual measures to try to combat the increase in syphilis. And they were issuing Sailor Moon condoms, uh, hoping to uh, combat this disease. And the report goes on in the say, the superheroine from the popular manga and anime series, series Sailor Moon has emerged once again to fight another evil, syphilis. As part of its campaign to raise awareness of sexually transmitted diseases, the health ministry will distribute 60,000 condoms wrapped in pink, heart-shaped packages adorned with the blonde, doe-eyed character Yusagi Tsukino. Hopefully I said that right. I'm not really familiar with Sailor Moon. Uh, the condoms which called for STD testing on the wrappers will be sent to 142 municipalities for distribution at events like World AIDS Day and the Coming of Age Day ceremonies um, that were coming up at that time. The health ministry will also distribute 5,000 posters and 156,000 leaflets illustrated with the junior high school character and a slogan that says, I will punish you if you don't get tested. By turning to the popular character, the ministry aims to regain control over syphilis, which has made a rapid return among young people. Um, and again, reiterating the age groups, the he says that the STD, out, STD outbreak is especially serious among women in their 20s and men in their 20s to 40s. Um, and just to give you a, an idea what this looks like, that's what the... Uh, uh, condom wrapper look like with a uh, sailor moon on it if you're familiar with that anyway needless to say that was in 2016 and syphilis cases continue to rise uh, to this day all right let me go ahead and talk a little bit of history and recent history that is and uh, here's a report out of the western pacific surveillance response journal and it's entitled Rapid Increase of Syphilis in Tokyo, an Analysis of Infectious Disease Surveillance Data from 2007 to 2016. And it has some pretty interesting numbers in it. And it says the objective of this study was to examine the trends of primary and secondary syphilis in Tokyo between 2007 and 2016 using national infectious disease surveillance data. We analyze all of the 3,269 cases reported during these 10 years. So for that decade, from 2007 to 2016, there was 3,269 cases. Just in 2018, there was almost 7,000. And already this year, basically through the first 11 months, there's been over 6,000. So that really tells you that uh, syphilis has really gotten more dire, more dire of a problem in Tokyo and Japan in general. Um, a statistically significant increase in cases was observed after 2010 with a more rapid rate of increases after 2014, mainly in urban areas in Tokyo. Until 2013, the increase was mainly observed among men who have sex with men. 
However, heterosexual transmission became more dominant and eventually surpassed transmission among the MSM in 2015. In 2016, the notified cases of infections through heterosexual contact were 22.3 and 40.4 times higher in men and women, respectively, compared to those in 2010. And also, it says reports of oropharyngeal lesions have been increasing among both men and women with syphilis. And back to the congenital syphilis issue that I had brought up earlier, the number of congenital syphilis cases reported in Tokyo was 0 to 3 cases per year during 2007 to 2016. This year, there was already 18 cases. So, pretty tragic stuff there. Syphilis is a common sexually transmitted infection. In 2012, an estimated 5.6 million new syphilis infections among people aged 15 to 49 were reported globally. In Japan, a venereal disease prevention law passed in 1948 mandated a syphilis patient notification system. Although syphilis cases nationwide decreased from over 200,000 in 1948. So right after World War II, uh, syphilis was rampant in, in Japan. So it was over two, over 216,000 cases in 1948. It dropped to 621 by 2010. Then afterwards, it rebounded back up to over 4,500 in 2016. So yeah, so this has been a big problem in Japan historically. They seem to really got things really under control up to about a decade ago. And here we are uh, seeing the second year in a row with over 6,000 cases. The most cases the country has seen, again, since 1970. And just, just for a little refresher, a little bit about some syphilis uh, information. I wanted to go over some signs and symptoms. Uh, syphilis is seen in four different stages. There's a primary stage where you typically see a single sore, maybe multiple sores, also known as shankers. Uh, they're painless and may go un unnoticed. Uh, they last about three to six weeks and they heal regardless if you get treated or not. Uh, but even if the sore does go away, you still have to receive treatment because if you don't, and treatment of course is just penicillin, if you don't, the infection will move to the secondary stage now, in the secondary stage, is you may have skin rashes or mucous membrane lesions. Um, these lesions will be in your mouth. It could be on the vagina, in the anus. And this, this stage usually starts with a rash on one or more areas of the body. The rash can show up where the primary sore is healing or several weeks after the sore has healed. The rash can look rough, red, or reddish-brown spots on the palms of your hands or on the bottoms of your feet. The rash doesn't typically itch, and it's sometimes so faint you won't notice it. Some other symptoms you may see are fever, swollen lymph glands, sore throat, weight loss, headaches, uh, fatigue, etc. Symptoms from this stage will go away whether or not you receive treatment. Again, just like primary stage syphilis. Uh, without the right treatment, penicillin, the infection will move to the latent stage and possibly the tertiary stages of syphilis. Now, the latent stage is a stage uh, where there is no visible signs or symptoms of syphilis. And if you do not receive treatment for the syphilis, you can continue to have the syphilis in your body for years, in, in cases decades, without showing any signs and symptoms. Then, of course, is the tertiary stage. And if you go untreated all this time, it could be decades, years or decades later, you can have tertiary syphilis where this can affect um, some of the organ systems, heart, the brain, uh, uh, CNS. Tertiary syphilis is very serious and would occur about 10 to 30 years after your infection began. In tertiary syphilis, the disease damages your internal organs and can result in death. Then it talks about neurosyphilis and ocular syphilis. These are things found in particularly the neurosyphilis in the very late stages. We have seen some ocular syphilis here in the United States and some of the West Coast cities in recent years. Um, and ocular syphilis is very serious. 
concerning your vision and it can cause blindness. Um, can syphilis be cured? Yes. It can be cured with the right antibiotics. Um, and however, they say treatment might not undo the, any damage that the infection has already done. And yes, you can be treated for syphilis and still get it again. You can become reinfected. So it's important to know that. So it's important if you um, are at any risk um, to see your doctor and, and to get tested. But all right. So that's what's going on in Japan. Um, we have been following this uh, story very closely for three, four or five years now. Um, and just seeing the numbers creep up and up every year. And uh, there is some unique things about the syphilis outbreak in Japan. It's primarily with a heterosexual population. Though we're seeing that popping up a little bit more in some other countries, but it's, it's definitely noticeable in Japan. Um, anyway, that's what we got. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please go ahead and share it with your friends. Comment below. Um, subscribe to the channel. Like this video. And I'll see you next time on the next Outbreak News TV.